Hey guys, Scott and Football here, back with another video. And today's video is a special announcement for uh, a special announcement on Wolves, uh, Wolves managerial news. So welcome to Wolves Julian Lopet Uh I think that's how you spell his name. Originally, on a few quite a few weeks ago, is it a month ago, he turned us down due to. Um, when he was first approached, due to his 92 year old father's ill health, so he did turn us down. So Steve Davis got put in charge. But due to how poorly he's been performing as an intermin, they must have changed their mind, thinking if the results carry on like this under him, we're going to go down, so that's why. We only got one win under him against Forrest, and we didn't. It wasn't. We didn't re replay that one, we didn't really deserve it to, um, to win. And against Leeds, but they had a lot of youngsters out there, Leeds as well. So, it's when uh, after soon, but just before the Brighton game, they announced it mind yeah, but they said he would be full fully mind in nine days time. So today, he's the brand new mind yeah, officially appointed. But um, he officially started his day today. But he was in the crowd on Saturday evening at home to Arsenal though. On that Brighton game, he must have been a crowd. I know he was on, in the game for the Arsenal game on Saturday evening. But in that game against Brighton, we did deserve something out of it. Personally, if it wasn't for Nelson Semedo being an idiot and getting himself sent off again, saying getting himself sent off, I think we might have got something out of it. If we, did. we might have actually dropped, got something out of it. But Brighton are a very good side though, aren't they? Against Arsenal on Saturday night, I didn't think we played that bad. I didn't expect to beat Arsenal. I don't think anybody did. And they said, I don't think they were better than us. I'll say they were probably the slightly better side. Not the best performance Arsenal have put in all season, but they'll definitely take that win against us. I thought we deserved to leave one goal, but the same old story, can't score. So now, our next game will be on... In the EFL Cup on the 20th of December, but the Premier League season starts again on the 26th of December on Boxing Day. Ruben has described it as the start of a brand new season after the World Cup for us. So with this break, Julian Lopetegui will literally have more time to prepare. Time to prepare and hopefully we do invest in January and bring some good players in. A brilliant really load of Spanish players now, <laughs> with him being Spanish. So I think he made the right decision. He's gonna need time. We all need to get behind him. He also needs to bring in new signings as well. So I'll take anything this moment. We're currently bottom of the league. With eight goals scored and twenty-four goals conceded after fifteen matches we played this season. Two behind Southampton, three behind Forest, and four behind Everton. So um sixteen played West Ham and four behind them. So technically we're not too far behind. Mind really, we just need to get the results. So his nationality is Spanish. In his senior career, he played as a goalkeeper. This is youth career, senior career, and managerial career that I'm going to give you all now. He, in his youth career, he started out at Real Sociedad before 1985. Before he got approached, when he started senior career, he got approached by a club called Castilla team in Spain. For, he played there from 1985 to 1988 and, and had 61 appearances there. And they went to, in, when, in 1988, he went to Real Madrid and played there until 1991. But he only appeared, he only had one appearance and didn't really play. So in 1988, not long after he joined, he went out to the Palmas on the, another, another um, Spanish club for a year until 1989 and had 31 appearances. He left Real Madrid in 1991. Um, and he went to a club called Log Log Logrones Logrones, and had for three years a hundred and ten appearances. So he did play a player there. They joined Barcelona in nineteen ninety four until nineteen ninety seven, and appeared have five appearances. Didn't play again. Yet for, for five years he went to Real, Real Vallecano for five years, and he played between nineteen ninety seven to two thousand two hundred and twelve appearances. So that, but he retired in 2002. He appeared in 1985 in the Spanish under-21 side, but only played one game. 
and the 1994 Spanish national team won game. And then between 1993 and 2000, he played for someone called Basque County, whoever they are, which is some country in the world. Now his, now his man coaching uh, career, managerial experience. In 2003, he went to Spain's under-2017 side as an assistant. Lopetegui was one of Spain's coaches, junior Juan Santana Santana. Teske Band's assistance at the 2003 UEFA European Under-17 Championship. In 2003, he went to Real Vallecano. After the tournament with Spain Under-17s, he had his first head coach spell at Real Vallecano with the club in, in the second level, but was sacked after the 10th match of the 2003-2004 campaign, which ended in relegation to Division 3. After working as a sports commentator, including for La, La Sexta, in the 2006 FIFA World Cup, so it says that he really he got sacked or left Real Vallecano and went to be a commentator for a while during the 2006 FIFA World Cup and went to... So in 2008, between 2008 and 2009, he went to the Real Madrid B's team. So he returned to coaching once again with Real Madrid Castilla. But it's their B's team, by the way, who he played for in the night... That's the team he played for in the 1980s, but now in the third, so a pretty rough manager, I'd say. From 2012 to 2014, Lobotegui worked with the Spanish youth teams, winning the 2012 European Under-19 Championship and the 2013 Under-21s Championship. He left the Royal Spanish Football Federation on the 30th of April 2014, following the expiration of his contract. So basically, contract expired. But most of his career, he's actually been at Spanish, a lot of Spanish teams, youth teams and stuff. In 2014, he joined Porto until 2016 um, for two years. Lobotegui returned to club due on 6th of May 2014, basically a couple of days after he. He left basically he, from all the Spanish youth teams. Being appointed by SD Port, where he signed several Spanish players to the club that summer, which it wouldn't surprise me if we do a Wolves now. In his first season, he chartered at the Estadio do Dra Dragio with the club's biggest budget ever. Lobotegui's led them to the quarterfinals in the UEFA Champions League, where they equaled the biggest, the club's biggest. Defeat in European competitions, losing 6 1 against SC Bayern Munich, having lost by the same score to AEK Athens in Greece in 1978. However, he failed to win any silverware there, contributing to the longest drought during Jorge Gior Nuno Pinto da Costa presidency. On 8th of January 2016, after a 3 1 home defeat against CS Maritimo, the tag. Attacker de Liga as Porto had already been eliminated from the Tap Champions League and was ranked third in the domestic league after an away loss and a home draw. Lobotegui was revealed of his duties and replaced by Roy Barrios, a new manager. A week later, the club announced that it had that it had terminated the former contract unilaterally. Probably another way of why he's acting, probably. But he found a new job in 2016 at the Spain national side and he, and he went until 2018 on the 21st of July 2016 after being strongly linked to English side Wolverhampton Wanderer who just joined so he had an interest back then as well which was under new ownership because in 2016 Fosen International took over a club from Steve Morgan and uh, Moxie basically took over them Between 2016 and 17, we managed to stay up, but we had a pretty poor season. But the following season, we managed to do all right. We had um, we had Walter Zenger recently, who basically he brought in quite a few players under him. He had a good start, but he just fell away, and he got sacked, bringing in um, and we brought in Paul Lambert, who was who did nothing. We have Rob Edwards at recently as temporary. There was rumours at the start of the season he might take over. I can't believe Rob Edwards, he left Forest Green, who took them up, and then he went to Watford. Yes, it's more money, and obviously you're going to go for the money, but with with Watford's ball's incompetence and the um, the lack of patience he has with managers, and you don't stick by the managers, that's why they always struggle. If I had the choice of going to Forest Green, uh, staying there with less money, getting a team promoted, or going to Watford with more money, 
I'll go Watford if it's for more money, but if it was for staying with Forest Green, you would get ambition to try and stay up or finish higher. And Watford's record on my you know, my they had, I'll probably stay at Forest Green. Got a lot of money in football now, isn't there? So, um, off that now, it was a, Lobotegi was announced as the new manager of the Spain national side following Vincent Di Bosco's retirement. In his first match in Charles on the 1st of September 2016, I think, he led them to a 2-0 friendly victory over Baldur and the King Badonian Stadium, which meant the nation qualified for the 2018 World Cup, winning nine and drawing one of the group matches. On the 12th of June 2008, with the team already in Russia for the tournament, it was announced that Lobotegi would take over the head coach of Real Madrid on a free year contract. So he had another offer to Real Madrid, so he went there. So he finished at, con uh, after the conclusion of Spain's involvement at the World Cup. I don't know where he got it. Quarter finals is something like that, I think. The following day, he was dismissed for a job with the national team and replaced by Fernando Hirio. Hiri Hiri in 2018, he went to Real Madrid, so it's Lobotegi's first competitive game in Charles. took place on 15th of August 2018 against local rivals Atletico Madrid in the UEFA Super Cup, losing 4-2 after extra time. He became the second Real Madrid manager to start his tenure by conceding four goals after an after Englishman, M M Michael, I don't know what his first, first, second name is, but what got down, the key no, if Michael Keeping, his name was, who began in 1948 being down by 4 1 by RC Salta de Vigo. Following a string of bad results and ultimately a 5 1 away defeat to Barcelona in the El Clasico, on 28th of October 2018, Lobotegi was fired a day later, being replaced by Santiago Sol Solari. And not so long after, he got. He went as well. He got didn't fail as well. I'm bringing that back. Um, who is that? Right, Zinedine Zidane. But he he left originally and then came back. He left the second time because he reckoned the club had no longer confidence in him, replacing with him with um, Carlo Ancelotti, who left Everton and joined them. So he so he has a, his record ain't good for staying in jobs. But he has, but he got a lot of experience though, and he's been to a lot of clubs. A lot of them have often been in Spain, and the and one was actually in Portugal. Here's the final thing here, in the job he had in 2009 to 2022. He was at Sevilla for about about three years. On 5th of June 2019, Lobotegi was appointed as the new Sevilla man, SC mind you, on a three-year contract. In his first year, he finished fourth to qualify for the UEFA Champions League, and on 21st of August, he defeated Inter Milan 3-2 in the 2022 UEFA Europa League final in his first club honour. The Europa League went on longer that season because um, it resumed in June, I think, or July, was it, due to COVID lockdown, the first lockdown. They knocked us out in the quarterfinals, they did. Lobotegi agreed to a further two-year extension on 10th of January 2021. However, on the 5th of October 2022, following five defeats in eight matches going into the 22-23 season, the last game for him being in a 4-1 home defeat against Borussia Dortmund in the UEFA Champions League where he was dismissed. He, the, he, he did quite well at Sevilla, really. He had success there. And he did win the Europa League with them. He did win a trophy. But if you go down here, his honours, in, in the men's football team when he was a player, he represented Spain as a player. In the FIFA Under-20 World Cup, he was a runner-up in 1985, representing Spain as a manager. In the UEFA Europe, European Under-19 Championship, he was a winner in 2012 and, two, and 2013. Personally, here... If he's not the manager to get us out of this mess, I don't know who else can get us out of this mess. We don't need to all get behind him. And the person needs to meet all the players and get used to all the players he won on his side. And which players are his plans. Because after the two games um, on Boxing Day, Everton away and Man United at home. Two very tough games. Everton is similar form to us and Man United, that are a good team now as well. 
So at least uh, with this, the good thing about this World Cup is that he's actually got more time now to actually prepare and stuff. So he has quite a few games to get organised now, doesn't he? It, we might have played well against Arsenal, didn't play that bad, do not, but it just proves with being bottom of the league, he's got a lot of work on his hands here. If he's got any chance of staying up this season, I'll take anything right now. 17th place, I'll take anything. So right then guys, I'll wrap the video up now. So, um, welcome to Julian Lopetegui on Joining Wolves. I could have done the video last week, but I thought on the day he announced to do two videos, I'll do this. I'll do it today. So, thank you all for watching today guys. If you did all enjoy the video, do get a like, do subscribe to the channel if you are if you did enjoy the video. If you are new around here, do subscribe to the channel. I've had a new, lot of new subscribers recently, which is very good. So, thank you for watching, guys. Have a good one. See you on the next one. With, um, we're still being a while because there's no Premier League predictions for a while, is there? So, see you all later. Bye, everyone.